Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And this, I'm going to be looking at my first impressions of each team in the NHL. We did part one last time up until Nashville, and it was so popular. I figured, let's do part two, shall we? All right. First of all, you need to know. Marvin the Martian. If you don't know Martian, Marvin the Martian, go choose it out. Where's the big kaboom? Anyways, uh, yeah, we did. It's my first impressions of the first couple of games from each team. Uh, is there t is there a need to panic? Like, say, in Montreal's case, I would have said yes. Uh, or are we? is this really uh, giving them an idea of where they need to improve? How are they gelling together? All of those sort of things like that. So it's fun. Tell me in the comment section if there's some players I miss that you think are doing really well or not doing well that I might have because being a fan of each team that you may be you probably watched every single game straight through all of it I jump around like crazy watching all the games I possibly can because I watch a divorce worthy amount of hockey I've got two divorces to prove it um, this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network if you like the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, sub yourself up, boys and girls. Sub up, hit the like, all of those sort of things like that helps the channel. And you get to be part of the NHL Pearl O Wisdom Show. Weekdays, 3 to 5 Eastern. And you can, it's all interactive. You can have fun. You can tell me how... Whatever you want to say about your team, we do predictions every day, and the frolic is amazing. You would absolutely love it, I'm sure. All right, let's start with the first team, which we did up to Nashville last time. This is part two, and now we're going to start with the New Jersey Devils. And first of all, we'll look at their record. 2-1-0, and oh, four points. Not a bad start in three games. Um, I, If you don't know, if you haven't been watching this channel, I don't know why everybody's been watching this channel, right? So maybe you were, had the COVID or something and you weren't able to get to it uh, for some reason. But you'll know that I really have been high on New Jersey this year. I like these teams that have their 23, 24-year-old players that are ready to take off. And they New Jersey has a ton of them. Zaka, Heischer, Bratt. I'd like to say Hughes, but he's injured. Dislocated shoulder at the worst time. He was looking freaking awesome, too. Sharon Govich, Kalkinen, all in that wheelhouse. And uh, it, basically their core... Then you get in this Dawson Mercer kid who um, was drafted 18th overall in 2020. Um, I remember I was saying I thought that was pretty low for him, a little bit of skating issues. But you know what? Everywhere he's gone, he has overproduced more than people thought. He made the world junior team when nobody thought he would. Um, I think, and now he's, He's made the roster in New Jersey when I don't think people were fully expecting that and probably will stay there. He's got two points already in three games. Looks fantastic, and he's exactly what New Jersey needed. Doesn't have a lot of size, but he plays a lot bigger. The funny thing is, is New Jersey actually has quite a few big guys in their lineup, but they don't play all that big. Dawson Mercer is the exact opposite. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he plays huge. His competitiveness is fantastic. So good to see him. And him and Tatar together is really interesting. But I love those top nine. Still, what I've watched of New Jersey has been fantastic. Um, the getting, I was going to really interested to see what Graves would look like with Hamilton. As far as I can tell so far, it's been prime. Really good. I uh, love Siegenthaler. I loved that pickup. I don't think... Uh, Fitzgerald has made really one mistake with this lineup. If you think otherwise, tell me in the comment section. And uh, P.K. Subban, uh, he's he's never going to be what he was ever. You know, as long as he's average, you got to be happy right now. 
and uh, Damon Severson. And I thought Christian Jaros held himself out pretty well. Definitely had looked the best that I've seen him in his career. So that's a bonus. And he's only 25 years old. Just nice pickups. Then we ran into the problems of Blackwood with his COVID issues with needles or whatever. I don't know. And now Jonathan Bernier is injured. How long is that supposed to be? Oh, good day to day. Because you don't want Scott Wedgwood taking up too much of the net, which we saw the last game against Washington. Didn't look all that great. Was definitely New Jersey's worst game of the season. But overall, I think this team is still going to press press for a playoff spot. I really do. Um, as long as they get their goaltenders back. Funny thing, over in Carolina, I was like, I'm kind of a Carolina fan. Uh, I, I don't know. I love the way Tom Dunnan has changed that team. And I was upset that they didn't take Bernier when they had a chance when they traded for uh, Nedeljkovic for him. Uh, <clears throat> because the player, the goaltenders they did take both had major injury issues in their past. And here we are now with Bernier with the injury and Blackwood with the injury. And those guys are just fine. So what do I know? Uh, yeah, get Jake, get back, get well, Jack Hughes. We need you. Miles Wood, love to have him too. Day to day right now, he's the kind of, again, that grit, he would be wonderful with uh, Mercer, wouldn't he? Nice combination there on the third line. Oh, love that. Alexander Holtz, I already looked it up, has two goals already in, in the AHL. That bodes well. So much depth in New Jersey. I'm still high on this crew. Um, haven't changed my mind on it. Next, New York Islanders. And, yeah, they're they're uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, what do they have? One win? I can't remember who that win was against. I think it was against Chicago, wasn't it? Uh, two losses uh, and, a, and one of them being an overtime loss. Not bad, but they came out of the gates pretty uh Pretty uh, tight, I guess you would say. Didn't look the greatest out of the gates. Uh, Sorokin didn't have the greatest games. Looked a little shaky, but you know they're going to turn it around. They got a 13-game road trip. I think that might have been kind of freaking them out a little bit. They needed to settle down, play game by game, forget about being on the road for 13 games. When you think about it, you're going to be away from your family for a very long time. And there's a lot of things going on in, in, in players' minds. Good thing they've got uh, Barry Trotz there to calm everything down like he almost always does. Um, the lineup is, you know, I the only thing is I weird is uh, I was wondering why Gab Gabriel Pajot was in there. He was in as a scratch, but now we see he's got an illness of some kind. Uh, it just says illness, not COVID-related or anything like that. So they're trying Zach Parise up the middle. And uh, I honestly have not been able to watch enough of the Islanders to get my read on that. Could you tell me in the comment section how he's been doing there? Um, Kiefer Bellows is getting a full-time role here. Looks like he's going to be a fourth liner. It does. Uh, I know he was a high pick, but his offense never really came about. But he's got enough uh, size and determination to be a good third to fourth liner. They got her on the third line here. Maybe Martin's replacement in the future or something like that. But you, um, Adam Pellich and Mayfield, Zana Charles looked pretty good to me. I mean, he's not going to put up lots of numbers or anything like that. And, uh, but he's looked for 44 years old. I thought he looked fine. Um, would Dobson's getting more time? I think he got an assist in the Columbus game. Um, you know he's going to be up there in the top taking Mayfield spot with Pellich not too long from now. He's just getting better and better all the time. Uh, we've got to get Barlamov back. Um, it's only day-to-day, -day, which is good. You know, I'm always a little bit concerned when Barlamov gets injured because in Colorado he had injury problems a lot and then struggled, and then the Islanders gave him a big contract, and you don't want to see that going back again. Leo Komarov finally goes down to the minors. Uh, he's a gamer. He'll handle it well, but he really needed to. It was abundantly off, obvious last year that he shouldn't be 
in the NHL. The biggest problem, and it's still a problem, I believe, for the Islanders is there really isn't that much depth in their lineup. And that could, in eventually, is gonna, could start hurting them. But I think they're going to turn it. I, I mean, turn it around. They're still doing not too bad. I think they'll go through that road trip, trip all right. And by the end of it, they'll be super strong for going through that road trip together because Barry Trotz is unbelievable. New York Rangers. Uh, now, I have seen a few games of the Rangers here. They've been on the road a lot. Uh, winning games in tight fashion and not looking good doing it. it was, uh, I can't remember who they were playing, but they were outshot significantly and happened to win it because Shesterkin was just unbelievable. I want to say Toronto. Is it Toronto? Ah. Anyways, tell me down there in the comment section who it was. But Shesterkin's been a beast. Uh, even against this last game with Nashville, Shesterkin was fantastic. Could be a Vesna in the off in there for Shesterkin. I don't know why his mind, he completely left my mind today. That, uh, today, this year, when talking about awards. Because there's no reason why Shesterkin can't crush it and win a Vesna this year. He's unbelievable. Uh Love seeing Lafreniere get a, two goals and assists in five games on the road. Um, Philip Heidel had his best game I've seen him in a while. That guy, I think, just needs confidence. Just play him up there in the second line. Let him go. I, he's got all the tools, but sometimes he looks like he just has no confidence. And now they have Sammy Blay on that line. I like that. Blay. Heidel and Lafreniere. And what I was going to say is, yes, the Rangers did not haven't looked good in the games that they've won sometimes. Um, it really it took a little bit for them to, it seems, to get going. And I think it's just learning to play with these new tough players like Barkley, Goudreau, and Blay. And creating that identity that they're obviously trying to create here in New York. It's been an adjustment. There's a lot of new guys in there. Uh, a lot of new guys. Uh, Kako is hurt, hurt and Ryan Strom is hurt. So they're building chemistry, and I think they're doing really well so far, considering all the change and everything it's doing. I had them second. I had them second in the, uh, in the Metro. So... Keandre Miller and Truba Fox and Lindgren. Thank you. Fox, Truba's still getting more minutes than Lindgren. I don't get it. Uh, I, I don't think that should be the case. Uh, oh, yeah, and we got to talk about Vitaly Kratsov. I don't know what happened there. I just read an article in The Athletic today that apparently he had a big problem with Drury. Something Drury, they, they weren't going in. He's definitely not going back to the Rangers. So every time I saw Kratzov play, I have to say I wasn't all that impressed. I thought he looked okay, but I don't I didn't think he looked like he should be telling organizations whether he should go down to the minors or not. Now apparently they made a promise when he, when they got him over here that they wouldn't put him in the minors and that's really probably the crux of the whole problem. But seems like some immaturity there. I don't know the whole situation between him and Drury, though. Maybe I could be wrong. Uh, anyways, let's go to the next team. Ottawa Senators. And finally, Kachuk comes back. He plays a game, gets an assist. Uh, looks pretty good. Loses to a hot San Ho They lose to a hot San Jose team. Uh, what's their record right now? 2-2-0. Two, two and oh. uh, Playing few on the road, 500 team. I kind of had them as a 500 team this year, but I also think that there's a good possibility they could click and do a lot better than that. We'll find out what Kachuk, the Norris Batherson line uh, looks like if they can get back to where they were last year. Uh, I Oh, good. They got Stutzlaw on the second line. I, they were playing them on the third line there with Tierney. I didn't understand that. Uh, they put Nicholas Paul up the middle now. Who was playing there before? Is there an injury? Oh, no way. Shane Pinto. Oh, no. 
Oh no, that hurts. My gosh, he's looked really good. Ouch. I didn't even know that till now. That That's too bad. Anyways, you, I had them probably uh, just missing the playoffs or somewhere around there. From what I've seen of the team, they're just like last year. They're gamers. They're going to fight hard every game, and they're going to outwork a lot of teams and win. But it's they're still a ways away. They're still very green. Talent level just isn't there yet. Um, the big thing is going to be how Matt Murray does. He, he played his first game, and he, he looked good from what I could tell. Uh, and Anton Forsberg, he's not the guy you want to be playing a lot of minutes for sure. But they get some guys back like Watson and Colin, and, and, and Colin White. Although Colin White isn't what he was projected to be still a pretty good third line right center and they could really use him or right winger they could really use him right now the big thing is um eric brandstrom being sent down i was surprised by that this year a little bit concerning to see brandstrom come down especially when joshua brown you're not taking joshua brown spot um a little bit worrisome or del zotto for that matter a little bit worrisome that he's not taking that spot at his age now with all the talent that he was supposed to have. I, I think they're right about where I thought they would be so far. Uh, again, it's early, but my first impressions are hardworking team that uh, just has a little, not, not quite enough talent, uh, veteran talent yet, experienced talent yet to make it into the playoffs. Uh Philadelphia Flyers, first impression, love their energy. I just love their energy right now. Konechny is playing like a freaking beast on fire. I love, 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 love the way Konechny is playing. He could be the difference maker to what to Philadelphia making the playoffs this year. Cam Atkinson going hard to the net. I think everybody's taking a little bit of sigh of relief here because Cam Atkinson struggled in the last two years in Columbus. But all I heard in the summer was the energy change energy. And these guys coming in had a great energy and they wanted to change the energy and all that stuff like that. And it looks like they have. Um, now, the last game against the Bruins, they were all played. But when you got an energy like that, when a team has an energy like that, I don't know, the pucks that used to hit the, hit the post or the crossbar, all of a sudden start going in. It's just confidence, right? They have an air of confidence about them this year. And uh, for this, again, four games in, we'll see if that continues. But it's sure nice to see now. For Philadelphia Flyers fans, it's very nice to see because you didn't see it last year much at all. Uh, Rasmus Ristolainen has only got one game in, but Ellis has just come in and played beautifully. Uh, awesome compliment to Provorov. Provorov doesn't have to worry about putting offense up so much. He can just be more of the defensive aspect, play the more of the defensive aspect of the game, which I think is best for him. And he's a beast when he does it. So um, Yandel has five points in three games. From all accounts that I've seen, uh, played well. He hasn't even... I, he, I haven't even noticed him being all that poor defensively. You know, he's never going to push anybody off the puck or anything. But he really he looks like he's playing with confidence, not coughing it up like he has known to be and all of that. For for three games, it's, it's a good sign. And Justin Braun, I can't believe I'm saying this, has looked really good. Never would have said that last year. So... The big controversy was that they played Jones with in Boston, and I think when when the coaches do that, like Av does, does, especially when Av does it, he really believes in putting confidence in players. So he's going to have his players, uh, goaltenders, play against teams like backups. They're not going to do what a lot of coaches do, just wait for a poor team on a back to back or something like that. They're going to throw him right in the fire. Gave him Boston, and he looked good. Very happy to see that. Now we got to see Carter Hart continue looking good. His last game, he looked good as well. Uh, did I even look at their... All right, 2-0-1. Haven't had a uh, regulation loss yet. So good to see Philadelphia. I am a Philadelphia Flyers fan, so very happy to see that. 
Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, this is their minors, which doesn't give you all that much. I don't know why I did that. Sorry about that. Uh, basically, this team has just been stupid. <laughs> I don't understand how they do it. Uh, what have they lost one game in four games so far? And with this lineup, now they've actually lost Jeff Carter too. COVID protocol. So Evan Rodriguez is their number one center. And I'll probably not pick them to win and they'll win again. It's just they never stop winning. It doesn't matter how many injuries there are. Drew O'Connor, by the way, looked really good. Uh, I think it was yeah, against Dallas. They lost the game, but Drew O'Connor looks fantastic. So much energy. Just getting – he goes after the puck, man. He doesn't wait ever for the puck. If anything, he might be a little bit over-aggressive, but I would rather that, especially at 6'3", 205, to teach him how to tone it down a bit. Uh Right out of the blue, you got a guy like that. Playing with Zucker and Heinen. Danton Heinen has three goals. Struggles in Boston. Struggles in Anaheim. Comes to Pittsburgh. Starts potting goals. Sullivan going to get a Jack Adams? If they make the playoffs and he doesn't get a Jack Adams this year, there's got to be some sort of conspiracy theory. <laughs> he is a fantastic coach. Um, doing way better than I ever thought they would. Simple as that. I... It's early, of course, but every time I watch them play, I'm just fascinated with how this team plays as a team, no matter who is in the lineup. It's like they automatically all know what they're supposed to do in every moment and do it extremely well. They know how to compete. Everybody on, the, on a Pittsburgh team seems to know how to compete, every single one of them. If they didn't know how to if they weren't good at it before they got there, they become good at it when they get there. It's it's an incredible team. Next, San Jose Sharks. Oh, I'm loving this, man. I'm loving seeing San Jose play well. Evander Kane, I, I said uh, um, before the season started, I, I said on my uh, podcast that I did um, and my live show, my live stream, that I think San Jose is going to have a better year than people think because – the energy that Kane sucked out of that uh, room every day is going to have an effect. I don't care how many goals a player scores. If, if players' minds aren't in the game when they get there and they're not in the right energy, you lose. It's simple as that. Huh? It doesn't matter who's on your team. You're going to lose games. There's no doubt about it. It's like a Zen thing. Uh, Jonathan Darlene potted two in one game. That was awesome. His uh, father, of course, is Ulf Dahlin. Nice to see, man. Um, this lineup looks good. William Eklund, drafted last year. Little guy right now. Still hasn't got his body up to NHL size, but doesn't seem to stop him so far. Three assists in three games played. Killer. I know you're watching, William, and it's making you feel all warm and fuzzy on your insides to hear Perlo talking to you like that. Right? Right. Hit the like button. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Thomas Hurdle. Looks like maybe they'll be able to sign him back. And there's talk, some chirping going on, that they're in on Eichel. I don't know how that would look like. Maybe Hurdle has decided he doesn't want to stay in San Jose. They're going to throw him on there, and Buffalo's going to be able to talk to him and sign him up or something like that. But I'll tell you, if you, uh, I know there's a lot of people out there, he's damaged goods, nah, nah, nah. from everything I'm hearing, he's going to come back and be fine. Doctors are saying that, I mean, this surgery has been done on oodles of people and like rest, uh, uh, UFC fighters, boxers, and almost all of them come back just as strong as they were before. If you could get, if it makes so much sense that San Jose would get this. They make so much sense. They're in a terrible spot that with contracts and stuff like that, things have gone rough. In 
and put Eichel in there, and then no matter what direction you decide to go, you can either rebuild around him, or he can bring this team to the promised land. Eric Carlson has looked excellent now that Kane's out. So is Burns. The whole energy of this team is way different. James Reimer actually... Uh, James Reimer actually had a really good game. I haven't seen him have a really good game in quite a while. And uh, who was that against? Ottawa. He played really well. I was surprised, I have to say. Wild card. I don't want wild card. I want to see the West. Oh, here we are. San Jose. I think you've won three in a row, right? Yep. Three games in a row. So... Pretty cool for San Jose. Love to see it. St. Louis Blues. Um, they've looked absolutely fantastic so far. Uh, St. Louis. Three, win three wins in three games on the road yet. And, of course, one of them was against Arizona. But you still got to win those. And they didn't look great. At first, it looked like they took them lightly. And so far, almost every team that has played against uh, that has played against Arizona has taken them lightly. I know the Edmonton Oilers certainly did. Um, but overall, they have you know they got you got to put those games away. I think they beat Anaheim. It's been easier teams, but they've got it done and they've looked good doing. Jordan Cairo. I didn't even realize he had seven points in three games. I just know that when I watched St. Louis, he stood out to me as a guy that's really flying. The last game, I can't remember who they were playing. I think it was Minnesota, uh, which, no, they didn't play Minnesota yet because they won all three. Uh, anyways, Vladimir Tarasenko looked awesome. That's got to give you a sigh of relief, right? Vladimir Tarasenko looking good. All of a sudden, the trade me rumors have kind of died down. Maybe he's going to be okay. You just forget about all that. Just yeah, yeah we didn't we didn't talk about that. That's that's fine. Um, the defense still doesn't look great to me, and I didn't have them making the playoffs this year. Maybe I'm overstating the defense, but it still doesn't look great to me. Falk has got four points. I I get it, but Jake Wallman has been well. He is pretty mad. And Robert Bertuzzo is too. I still don't think Marco Scandella in your top pairing is wise. Overall, I just think this defense isn't very good. But Jordan Bennington has looked wicked. So good. That might be the thing that changes everything right there. Jordan Bennington, if he plays out of his head, keeps his mind on hockey, off of all the stuff going on around him and stuff like that, they could be in a very good stead. By the way, just to notice this, Saad is in COVID. Uh, that's too bad. Because he was playing up, he was playing well up there in that top line. Uh, but he's in COVID right now. So I like Barbashev too. Give him a chance. Okay, next, Tampa Bay. And they have been fairly mad to start out with. Just like um they were last year in the regular season. Now they're back to being like that again this year. Uh, came around. It was really the first game against Pittsburgh. They looked absolutely horrible. And then the, then they played Detroit. Same thing. Turn it on. Win in the third. I think they then played, was it Colorado? Or Washington? Colorado or Washington. Anyway, I think it was Colorado. They look good, good playing. Playing that now they're starting to look good again. But they started off a little rough. I guess that's to be expected after winning a cup, and you have a very short uh, season in between off season, and then the big changeups in the lineup. Sorelli's just getting used to Joseph. Um, Stamco's point and plot are maybe not so much of an adjustment there, but Maroon's playing higher with Colton and Perry. Perry's new. Kachuk is new. Radish is new. Just 
they're getting used to each other and and, and uh, building that chemistry up. I'm sure Tampa Bay is going to be more than fine. And, of course, Nikita Kucherov being out now again. And I had to eat crow. I had to say, I had to admit it. Last year, I was very suspicious of the whole Kucherov thing. But now, yeah, I think I was wrong. I was wrong. I admit it. I was wrong. I think they're going to be just fine. Um, the problems may pop up when they got to bring up guys from the minors. There's not too many guys here like they usually have waiting in the wings to crush it. Like certainly not Charles Houdon and stuff like that. And that's what my issue was before the season started. Cal Foot, I hear, is coming back now. And uh, they have him in the minors. I They should be calling him up. I think he was injured and then they're going to let him play a little bit and bring him up which will be big. Uh, probably defensively, they're probably in better shape than offensively. Uh, but they certainly got enough to make the playoffs. And I'm pretty sure they'll turn things around, no problems. Toronto Maple Leafs have really been surprising me, mostly because I just, I didn't value enough how good Marner, Matthews, Nylander, and to a, maybe to a little bit lesser extent this year, Tavares, has been. They are just absolutely enormous players. Nylander, I, I, I don't know why I'd underrated. I, I said that I believed that he had a hundred point season in him one time in his career. So why it's just it's just the depth, right? You're all where it, it's everything you hear is depth, depth, depth. You need depth to win in the NHL and I just don't still see it here. Um the depth players have played no um satisfactorily is that a word uh but i wouldn't say that it's fantastic except for michael bunting and i love that pickup when they picked up michael bunting big ups rasmus sandin has looked really good and that's a lifesaver for tampa bay having sandin rock this this year would be absolutely huge that would give them a top five a top six that is pretty formidable although I'm not a big Justin Hole fan still he's not bad and that's not what we were expecting Jack Campbell has been unbelievable so far 1.18 so far um, that's really been the story hasn't it it's been uh, Toronto's two one and one in, in four games so I would say they're better than I expected them to be so far. And we'll see how things work with injuries. Peter Morazic getting injured uh, could be difficult. Hutchinson, I believe, is playing tonight against San Jose. That, you know, he has his good games, but he's fairly inconsistent. Injuries still, I think, could be the problem for Toronto. Uh, Vancouver Canucks. And I just realized that I missed Seattle, so I'm going to do Seattle at the end. Um, they have looked, their defense has just looked terrible. Simple as that. They got it. They beat Chicago, who is also poor defensively. So far this year, it seems like unless we see something different, and that's it's kind of hard because they have played a lot of road games. But so far, it looks like they're going to beat some defensively poor teams, but they're probably going to struggle against um, defensively solid teams. I, I just, they're too soft. And, and the one, and the players that do have some size and ability are either too soft or too slow, like Tucker, Tucker Pullman. Thatcher Demko is their lifesaver. And Vasily Podkolzin is already scratched. He's been, he was supposed to be the savior, and it's not happening for him. In fact, I'm going to go to Seattle now. All I got to say about uh, Vancouver is they're going to score a lot. Uh, they're going to get scored on a lot, even with Demko there, and I'm still not sure if they're going to make the playoffs. I got to fill in Seattle here. Seattle, there we go. My. Uh, so far this year, they kind of are exactly what I thought they would be this year. 
probably a right around a 500 team. Um, they'll win. They'll surprise some teams. Uh, cause, and they're in a weak division, so which is kind of bad for them. It would be better if they were in a strong division. 1-3-1. One, and one. They have been on the road a lot. They play Vancouver, I believe. Is that tomorrow, Saturday, uh, I believe? And uh, yeah, at home. So we'll see how they are at home. But as I've all I've said I've always said about Seattle, um, they I like their depth, depth scoring. That's where they're going to hurt people. Um, there's not a lot of teams that have scoring like Tanev, Geeky, and Donskoy on the third line. And to me, that's where they're going to win most of their games. Jared McCann, they got him on the. Why does everybody put Jared McCann on the wing? Because um, he can, I suppose. That's why he can play both, I guess, fairly equally. I just like him up the middle. Um, but I think Jared McCann will get his points, five points in five games. I predicted he'd get about 70. Eberle is get, doing what he normally does. Tons of shots, can't score. And uh, I think that's going to be the main folk problem with Seattle. Uh, I thought before the season and watching them, I still think scoring – is going to be a problem. And a lot of that is because they don't have any de- many defensemen that move the puck very well. The one that they do, Vince Dunn, is struggling like he did in St. Louis. Um, I do like the fact that they put Giordano with Alexiak now because they had Alexiak and Larson together, and I don't get that. I'd rather see Lauzon and Larson. Not even that, really. I guess they just don't have anybody to put that can move the puck with Larson. And that's really the problem. They need to find somebody that can move the puck well to play with Larson because Larson does not move the puck well. Um, Hayden Fleury, I thought maybe he might get a really good shot, but he's struggling here. This is his third team, and he's getting scratched again. Uh, Ryan Donato, all he can do is score on the power play. Besides that, there's not much way to use him. He's terrible defensively. Not good five on five, and now he's getting scratched again. But my overall take is they look like a just under 500 team, missed the playoffs. Uh, I think that'd be smart, and I mentioned it before, that they trade guys like Donskoy and stuff when they have value at the deadline for picks, get some more free agents, and repeat. Vegas Golden Knights. Um, big problems with injuries. Pacioretty's injured, Stone is injured. Tuck is injured. Uh, those are three big players to have on your lineup. How about your lineup? Um, that being said, uh, I think it was against Anaheim. They looked very, very good. They have a big one coming up tonight against the Edmonton Oilers. Um, I still have problems with their their center depth. And I heard they might be in on Eichel. I think that would be wise if they can find a package that works. But... I still say the same thing. They're gonna. I, I still think they're gonna have difficult times uh, competing with other teams up the middle. Uh, Nolan Patrick hasn't looked good. Uh, Genny Dadenoff has looked better than he did in Ottawa, but he does look a little lost out there. Of course, we'll get. He's got to get some time to work with his line mates and stuff like that. But um, he has looked better. I think he just needs to find some chemistry. Peyton Krebs has looked really good as advertised, even though he doesn't have a point. It's nice to have that kind of a speed and determination that he has in your lineup. As far as defense, that's where really I think Vegas shines. Is he going to be out? Oh, Alec Martinez is going to be out for a bit. I just picked Vegas to beat Edmonton tonight, even with all these injuries. I don't know. Edmonton's defense is terrible, and the system that Vegas has, even with these players out, I think can rip apart the Oilers' defense, and that's what I love about this team, and it's still the same way. I love the way they play defense man-on-man aggressively. Fantastic. And Robin Lehner has looked very, very, very good. Very, very, very good. If there was any questions, I shouldn't be any questions now. I think he's looked... Excellent. I don't care what his GAA and all that stuff like that. He's had some tough games. He's had some tough uh, nights with his defense, but overall, I thought he looked really good. 
Uh, Washington surprising the crap out of me so far. Is it four wins in four games for Washington? Or three wins and one overtime loss. And they've looked fantastic during it. Ovechkin looks like a man possessed. Four goals, four assists in eight games. He looks like a man possessed out there. I think he heard all the noise in the offseason and said, oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll see about that. Because the noise was that uh, from a lot of people, Washington wasn't going to make the playoffs. But the big thing has been Evgeny Kuznetsov coming out and playing well. Thank you. God for that, for him as a person and everything, because there seemed to be some issues there, and he has come out strong and played really well. Now, besides that, I found the lineup has been pretty average. It's really been carried by that top line that's been fantastic. Um, Sprong, Eller, Mantha, he's been okay. That's what he always is going to be, your 50-point guy. I still have questions about this team, but so far you can't deny that they've looked pretty good. Nick Jensen has looked way better than I ever saw him before, and that's fantastic. And I was question, I was kind of wondering what Fahervi was going to be. If you remember last year when he played, I was like, this guy looks really good. He looks not bad at all, and here he is getting top pairing minutes. And from what I saw, he's being exactly what he's supposed to be. A nice shutdown defenseman. It looks like he's got a long career in the NHL. And the big one for me that was not what I expected is v uh, Vitek Vanacek. Really, he's probably the biggest reason why they're doing so well right now. Um, I wonder how much Samsonov is going to get in now. I didn't think, I wasn't a big Vanacek guy. I admit it, I wasn't. But so far, I'm going to have to change my mind, aren't I? Because he's been really good. What do you guys think, Washington fans? How's your team been? And the Winnipeg Jets, struggling early, to say the least. Now, they came around last game and won 5-1 against the lowly Anaheim Ducks. Uh, I actually had Anaheim winning that game. I think I'm off of Anaheim now for a bit, though. What the heck is going on here? I want to look at the... Standings, there we go, Western. Uh, where are they here? Winnipeg, 1-2-1. One, and one. Now, a lot of those were on the road, but they just didn't look good early. Hollabuck hasn't looked good early. Is it just me? Help me out here, guys. Does Hollabuck all, seem to always start off shaky? Uh, but I know one person that's not starting off shaky is Kyle Connor. I predicted 50 goals for him this year, and it looks like that just may be the case. He could actually do it. Now, this is early, of course, but he's in fine form early. One of the few players that have been in fine form, him and Andrew Kopp. Uh, Dubois is starting to look a little more comfortable now, which is a big sigh of relief for Winnipeg fans, I would say. I think it's all going to be about what this third and fourth line turns into, because it used to be a, a strength. But now, I'm not so sure. Um, the defense, Nate Schmidt, looked good last game, but it took a little while. Uh, and it may take a little longer for everything to gel here. This was a lot of movement on, on the D, so I'm going to leave kind of judgment on that. I still thought, I thought that they were going to be better than last year, and I still believe they will. But so far, it's been, nah, not really. Um, Blake Wheeler and Shifley being injured and that team winning last Game is fantastic. How long are they going to be out? What's this? Uh, I don't know. But the team, they're, they're, they won. They won without him, and that is a really good sign. All right, that's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Hope you enjoyed the fine programming. Uh, make sure you're hitting that follow and like button. I'll catch you. It's weekend time for me. I'm going to have my show on here in a half an hour. So come on in. Three to five weekdays, Eastern, the NHL Pearls of Wisdom, Pearl of Wisdom show. I'd love to have you. Okay. Bye.